that's dope. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. It is 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on April 16th, and it's Friday. So for a lot of you, you're probably hanging out with us on a Friday night. We definitely appreciate you giving us our time. Now, I'm super t- excited for today's live stream, mostly because I don't have to talk to myself the entire time. I actually have somebody to talk to and have a conversation with, which I know you guys will probably appreciate. Now, Nexo is also the newest sponsor of my podcast, which is really, really exciting, and I'm super psyched to have them on board. So uh, rather than explain myself what Nexo is all about, I'm joined by Ant- Antony Trenchev. I don't know if you go Antony or Antony. You know, I'm sure well, it's American. Well, either way, Antony is perhaps easier <laughs> the, for the, your part of the world. The, the, the Americans always get it wrong. And he's the co-founder <laughs> and uh, managing partner at Nexo. You guys can definitely feel free to ask questions in the chat. You can ask him whatever you want. I'll get to as many of them as I can. And I have a whole bunch of questions that I actually have prepared as well. But I want to start off with just letting you tell everybody uh, about Nexo. Obviously, it's your platform and you'll do a much better job than me. Absolutely. Before that, I just want to say I love the intro music. Don't get tired of it. It's absolutely fantastic. And thank you so much for having me. I'm a long time uh, fan of the show. Awesome. Thank Uh, you. More in the listen format. I tend not to be a very good viewer, but I do listen to it uh, quite a bit. yeah, and to kick things off, what is Nexo all about? We are a institution within the blockchain space and we provide banking services for the blockchain space. Our bread and butter uh, are two lines of products or have historically been, which are first off the, uh, the instant crypto credit lines, whereby you can take out the loan against your crypto. We were one of the very few uh, platform when we kicked off in, uh, well, almost three years ago on wow. April 30th is going to be three years since the platform went live. Um, so, you know, uh, <laughs> there was no way for you to take out a loan back then. And that's how Nexo uh, came about. Then out of the necessity for us to grow organically, we developed the Earn Interest product, which is super popular right now and has always been since inception because we go as high as 12% per year on the various uh, asset types, uh, you know, uh, traditional banks and companies can't compete. And, you know, uh, just building a suite of um, products around that, the uh, uh, internal exchange, you know, the Nexo card, which I'm sure somebody has asked questions about. Lots. So, you know, everything, <laughs> 360 degrees for you to be uh, on the Nexo platform and conduct all your finances digital or otherwise. So I, I want to ask you the most obvious question. I know it's going to come up 15 times probably. How do you offer 12% interest? Where do you gain yield? How, how do you offer that safely? Right. Well, there, there are two ways uh, uh, in which we generate the yield. First of all, uh, you know, the people that earn with Nexo, their fiat and uh, stable coins, they go to financing the loan portfolio. We lend out the other side of the book, which are uh, to the other side of the the people to the other side of the book, which are, you know, the the borrowers against their their crypto. And, uh, you know, it's a you borrow as a company at a lower rate and you extend credit at a higher rate and you make, uh, you know, uh, it's about the margin between the the two rates. And it is perhaps one of the oldest uh, uh, business models in the world. And then secondly, because at a certain point we have gotten more uh, people earning than perhaps meet uh, the needs of the the, of the loan book at all times. When they those exceeded, we engage in uh, market neutral trading strategies such as, uh, you know, basis trading, uh, arbitraging between different asset classes still possible and very lucrative given the nascency of the industry and the inefficiencies between exchanges, you can make in a a neutral way substantial double digit returns on an annual basis. And that's how we, uh, you know, provide the yields that uh, uh, we extend to the community. 
So apparently 12% isn't enough because we got a question here. When will we be getting 22% interest rate on lending USD? <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, uh, I would like to know that as well because I'll be <laughs> depositing too. all my funds as well uh, there as well. But uh, truth to the matter is that these are uh, rates that are determined by the market forces. It's supply and demand. It's what everybody else is doing. It's our ability to generate those yields. So we are not a greedy bunch. We go as high as we possibly can, uh, but we want to be able to sustainably uh, generate those yields and you know some of the other competitors and uh, uh, offerings in the space they say you know this is my customer acquisition cost I don't do any marketing I'm going just to throw out free money that I got from my VCs and investors just so <laughs> that you know ultimately I'll be taken over by Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan which might work out, might not work out, you know, with Uber, WeWork, Airbnb, all these companies that have been uh, burning cash for so long. Uh, it's not absolutely uh, impossible that this will happen. We, as a company, as a human beings, are more of a conservative uh, uh, bunch, and that's why we opted for a business model that actually makes sense. You make money in the process of doing good for the community and the rates are determined by market forces ultimately. Oh, that, that makes perfect sense. Now you touched on it uh, right in the intro and we've already got multiple questions about it. When the Nexo MasterCard will be released. Here before <laughs> please, please, get ready, get ready, please, get ready, get ready, get ready. You don't want to be dry. So uh, when, yes. when will the Nexo MasterCard be released and by when do you expect to announce the bank license acquisition? Thanks. And I know you guys have been talking about it, I think for two years, right? So it's got to be coming soon. So what's the update? Well, uh, let's start with the card first. Well, we have shipped uh, a few thousand cards in Europe already. This was the first batch. Uh, we wanted to make sure that everything runs smoothly uh, and as envisioned because this type of program that we developed together with uh, the issuers and MasterCard uh, is, a, is a world's first. There wasn't a card like that. It took a while until we could explain it to MasterCard how exactly it has to work to develop the technological capabilities. So uh, quite frankly, we <laughs> took them by their deadlines and we, that's why we were a little bit off because they, were, uh, they weren't quite uh, uh, ready and sure what to expect. And that's why I'm very, very, uh, you know, uh, cautious with regards to self-prescribed deadlines going forward. I've learned my lesson here. Um, but the card is working close as to what we wanted it to be. And the difference is that you have a lot of crypto cards. You know, there, there is like at least five or six programs whereby you top up your card with Bitcoin, you go to your local Starbucks, you swipe your card, and this means you have sold a portion of your Bitcoin. That that, that's not a novelty. You got a lot of companies offering that where the innovation with Nexus card came in and why it took longer than we expected is that when you swipe the card, instead of selling your Bitcoin, which by the way, uh, 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 um, makes you liable to pay capital gains tax. So your latte just got 44% more expensive if you are in the great state of New York, for example. With Nexo, <laughs> when you swipe it, you get extended an instant credit line. So we check your collateral, we provide you with your loan, and you are paying off your latte with, uh, with the loan proceeds, which is very efficient because that doesn't trigger a capital uh, gains tax. And this is essentially what uh, Wall Street and Silicon Valley have been doing for the past 30 years, you know, borrowing against their asset rather than uh, selling them at a profit. And thus avoiding a paying capital gains tax. Not that I'm giving tax advice this beautiful Friday afternoon. No, but I mean, but in the United, in the United the States, yeah, in the United States, it's so funny. We talk about, you know, mainstream adoption and PayPal is going to let merchants, you know, accept crypto and stuff, but they've made it functionally impossible, as you said, to want to do that because everything's 37% more expensive for me yeah, in Florida. Exactly. Like you said, 44% in New York. So that's really an interesting uh, approach. I actually wasn't aware of that. Right. And you also miss on the entire price action if you have given, I don't know, something for your coffee and then 
Bitcoin goes up ten, uh, tenfold in a <laughs> year, you feel not quite as stupid as the person who uh, bought pizza uh, with Bitcoin, pizza guy. right? Yeah, <laughs> pizza guy, but uh, you know, a, a close second. So that's why uh, it took a while. We are almost uh, going to, uh, to be ready for a full-fledged rollout in Europe uh, after the few thousand cards that have been shipped. And to my surprise, the team working on the card is telling me that it might be that actually in the US we're going to uh, hit the card market even sooner. So, wow. uh, you know, definitely uh, nice announcements around the block. And maybe next time we talk about who have, uh, you know, put the check mark of this is done and there's no more uh, card questions. You don't have to field any more questions. And, and the second half was a, a bank license bank. acquisition. I'm not sure if that's yeah. something that's, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm limited as to what I can talk uh, about uh, publicly because we are at the stage where we're talking with regulators and, uh, you know, even with, uh, with the commercial terms, we are bound by strict confidentiality agreements, but we are like, uh, I think I did an interview maybe three weeks ago and there's not much progress in terms of what I can announce from that point. We are in the final stages of the due diligence process. We are talking to the regulator. They have to sign up on the deal. So it might be like everything is done and it could still go wrong. I hope not. I'm very optimistic, super excited because I'll open uh, uh, the doors for a lot of different products that we might add and you know to be in a position to even more aggressively market the products uh, because in Europe in certain jurisdictions you can't be uh, soliciting clients for anything resembling uh, bank deposits uh, or you know the, the earned product right. essentially so we're super excited about that but not much I can disclose at this stage. So next question are there any plans to fight against the usual dump before the dividends date? Absolutely. Uh, first of all um, you know the, the dividend is, has historically been a very uh, important part of the Nexo token, but while it was predominantly still the, the, uh, the dividend and some utilities, you know, we saw a very close range between 10 cents and 40 cents of trading action based on that. Now, we um, devised a strategy which we duped the uh, Nexonomics remake. We you know, almost entirely remade the, the token in the sense of adding more utilities, uh, more perks to it, to the point that the market <laughs> has appreciated it quite significantly. And we went from, you know, 20 cents in, I don't know, October to $3.40 last time I checked, and that was an hour before we went on air. So it's obviously uh, much less, um, its value and its pricing is much less connected uh, to the Nexo dividend. So I do not anticipate there to be a dividend dump because there are so many other reasons to hold the token. And on top of that, uh, I have, uh, you know, uh, pointed out to this, uh, I think once before, we are in the stage uh, where we are going to implement a governance element to the tokens. So you know the govern uh, the uh, the the token holders uh, holders will have a uh, much larger say in how Nexo is being run, and that creates obviously even further utility for the token. Um, and you know we would be giving the community precisely what they want, and I think that's a anti dump measurement as good as it gets. Uh, and, and I'm curious, actually, um, I know the last dividend was in August. Maybe I just missed it. But do you know when that actual date is or do people know when the yearly dividend payout is? Well, um, we have committed to an annual dividend or no less than annually. Yeah. One of the suggestions that will be posed uh, during governance voting will be the different suggestion the community has with regards to uh, the dividend distribution. So. We'll see what the community uh, wants and we'll figure out the best way to deliver it. So we'll see. It makes sense. So another question for, for you, how is Nexo uh, with a whitelisting type service for withdrawal addresses to prevent possibly hacking type behavior? 
So right. I guess they're asking I, if you'll have a whitelisting feature for, uh, I for have withdrawals. I've been waiting myself as a myself as a customer of Nexo forever. I'm nudging the uh, the dev team every now and then uh, to develop it. It's definitely coming this queue. Uh, I don't have a deadline, you know, stricter than that, but definitely but it's coming. coming this queue. It is definitely coming. And, you know, the addresses like address book, you know, all the nice things that we have seen elsewhere in which for some reason we don't yet have. Uh, but in terms of safety, I, you know, it's always uh, a, a tricky subject, but I, you know, I'll put it this way. I think we've done a better job than most companies in terms of securities. And, you know, if you Google any blockchain company plus hacks, uh, something's bound to come up. Luckily, sure. we uh, have zero hits on that front. So, you know, even without whitelist, we think we've done a finer job of uh, securing our clients' assets. I, I can't imagine running any company in this space, to be honest. I don't envy you guys because these, I mean, the hackers, they never stop, right? And they try no. to evolve. They, the and they evolve you faster get, yeah. than, yeah, and they evolve faster and they're more creative every day. So yeah, it's really, uh, really impressive. And I would probably lose sleep at night if I was in your position. So next question, will the US be able to run interest in Nexo tokens? Will the US be able to run to earn interest in uh, Nexo tokens? Um, yeah. That's a great question. As it currently stands, uh, we would have to exclude some states, have to talk to legal about which ones we have to exclude and because there's like of the, states, the United States is the most difficult thing in the world. It's right? so ins it's so insane. It, you have it's, to, it's basically like dealing with fifty countries at once. A, a, exactly. And I thought the European Union was bad enough, and it's only 27 or 8, I don't know, lost count. But the US is even worse, so we will have to exclude certain, uh, uh, certain um, states uh, from this. It's, it's, not, it's not what we want, but it's you know, complying with the regulator, keeping the enterprise, and by extension, every one of our clients and investors safe. So. Is, is going to be as per regulation. So whatever, whatever we're allowed to do is what we're going to do. Every time I have a conversation with anyone about this, they're usually like, forget the US, we're not even going to try. So it's good that you even yeah. are, are trying because honestly, are most people just throw hard, their hands. You know, it's yeah. a good fight. We're keeping it. Yeah, most people kind of just throw their hands in the air and say, forget it. It's not even right. worth talking to 50 states, you know, so it's impressive. Do you well, offer, the, Go ahead. Sorry. The, the reverse is also true. You know, I know a lot of US companies, like when are you going to expand it internationally? They're just like, nah, we're good with the states. You know, it's so it's large and so wealthy as such. I also try and understand them. You know, if you got the US covered, you're almost good to go. Yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense. Let me go to the next one here. Uh, someone asked, do you offer fixed rates for different periods of maturity? Yes. <laughs> so, is there a follow-up? Yes, that, 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 that's the whole question. Okay. I just I, I feel I, obligated I, to ask I, them. <laughs> right, but I feel like I could read this person's mind and imagine what they uh, uh, intended to ask. So give us uh, the follow-up, because sometimes right. it's lost in translation yeah, a bit, certainly. Yeah, it is. We have a fixed uh, um, time horizon, fixed periods in which you can earn a higher rate than on the flex mode, which like uh, makes total sense, right? If you can withdraw, lock it in, uh, yeah, lo yeah, lock it in. So we have lockup periods, uh, and they those give you higher rates, which is natural. This is a fairly uh, a fair novelty on the platform. We I think. It, probably a month ago introduced that we have the flexible rate and we have the most flexible rate because you can withdraw it like you get paid your interest daily i don't think anyone else does that no nobody else does that maybe binance but their rates are super low so they don't even count like you know with other lenders you either get your interest weekly or even monthly so we are the only ones who are paying it daily and it is because the level of trust in Nexo gives us enough liquidity to be in a position to offer that. So, uh, you know, we have, the we have the most flexible rates and I think also the, higher one, uh, the highest ones even on, uh, uh, on, on, on the flex rate. Daily is crazy because what people don't realize is you show the interest rate, obviously, for the APR, but 
you get to compound daily instead of yearly. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. actually probably uh, much higher when you calculate it, it out. Yes, but it is, also, uh, it is also like a matter of technological solutions. And like, you know, I remember meeting certain founders of certain companies that now bad mouth us in like 2017. And they had a total different view in mind. And then they heard my pitch and think it was in, La in Vegas and they totally pivoted towards our direction and they thought like crypto uh, credit automation easiest thing in the world and you know three years in they don't have the platform we had three years ago so yeah. it's not as easy as it as, as it is the more lines of code there is the, the, the trickier it gets and with us everything is almost fully automated right uh, next question from Gordon Baisley is when will the list of supported coins tokens be expanded Seems like you've expanded it a lot. <laughs> we have expanded it a lot. Uh, we are looking to always onboard uh, new collateral types and new tokens to offer interest on. It is a matter of liquidity. It is a matter of market cap. Okay, well, we, we used to say like the, it, it, uh, they, uh, the, 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 the asset has to have more than a billion in market cap. And that has been uh, recently a very low threshold because I remember when we said that there were like 14 of them and now almost all of the top 100 have a, a market cap of 1 billion. So not sure what our criteria are, but definitely uh, with regards to market cap, but there has to be the right type of liquidity just to make sure that, uh, you know, if need be and if we see a larger correction, we'll be able to uh, liquidate the collateral. Uh, makes sense. We are one of those companies that actually issue, you know, time-based margin calls uh, and uh, well, price-based, pardon me, price-based rather yeah. than time-based because the markets are so volatile. We want to protect everyone on both sides of borrowing and lending. Uh, and, you know, we got to be sure that there is enough liquidity and, you, you know, people have a very I don't want to offend everybody, anyone, but <laughs> definitely not everybody. Please, please. <laughs> yeah. uh, but like people have a very simplistic view of what uh, liquidity is. They go on mar uh, call market cap and they see 20 hour right. volume, volume. Or, uh, yeah. uh, the 6 billion and they think that's actual volume and it's not. It's uh, slightly more complicated. We have the greatest team uh, figuring that out uh, and we are adding collateral as fast uh, as possible as long as it's safe. It is in our business interest to acquire uh, more customers, more uh, di different uh, collateral times, but you just want to be uh, on the safe side here. That's a great answer. So, by the way, how crazy it is it that the top 100 coins have a billion market cap? Yeah, it, it is. I, I really didn't see that coming. Honestly, yeah. I, I mean, I'm very yeah. bullish, but that's beyond even my <laughs> expectations for this point. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. So the, the next question from Benedict. Hi, Scott. Hi, Anthony. My question would be whether you're planning to publish your numbers like loans process, number of users, total assets locked. Okay. Uh, I don't think I remembered all of them, but I'll say this. We are working on auditing our financials. So they would be even more, um, how should I phrase this? They will be even more persuasive, more detailed and more eloquent than uh, what Benedict just asked. So it's, you know, bear with us a little longer. We have been in the, uh, in the process of auditing the financials uh, for, for longer than we wanted. And it's quite frankly, because the auditing, the, the accounting companies and the auditors, they haven't really developed all the tools that are necessary because we're talking millions and millions and millions of transactions and they're crypto based and they have to figure it all out. But uh, we, you know, have this initiative for more transparency, which was uh, a concern of some uh, Nexo users, clients and investors. And I would say a, a justified one, but they blamed it on me not being transparent. And it's not like I'm not being transparent. I'm just awfully busy with developing all yeah. uh, the, the business uh, needs of Nexo and figuring out and growing the company like all of us here at Nexo. So it's not that I'm an inherently intransparent person or You're just busy. Uh, that I, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, it's crazy. We're sleeping with, we're doing like uh, 18 hour days yeah. you know, for the past three years. And it's like, 
but we've listened to the community. That's why I've committed to at least a monthly Ask Me Anything session. This great. one being with you, which is great. Yeah. So bear with us. We are on the right track. The, uh, the road to full transparency is a longer one. I've been working on my taxes for six months and I just had to file an extension and hire like an extra accounting team just for myself. Yeah, so right, I can't right. even imagine it's, it's, I mean, it's almost impossible, especially in the United States. I feel for you. So this is just a great, yeah. simple question. How does the loan payoff work? How does the loan? Pay I guess off if you take work? a loan, how, how yeah. do you pay it off? Like what's the actual okay, right, process? Okay. Yeah. Very simply. The, the, the question was so simple that uh, it got me staggering. Yeah. I was confused. Yeah. <laughs> by it. it happens every now and then. Well, you can uh, rep well, you can repay it in a currency of your choosing, meaning that uh, you know it doesn't have to be like if you deposit Bitcoin and withdraw uh, tether. Uh, it doesn't have to be in tether. You can deposit a bunch of different uh, assets uh, uh, to to repay it. So this will be the most direct way. You can, uh, on the platform, sell a portion of your collateral uh, to cover your loan. And then thirdly, you can do nothing. And then, <laughs> you know, if there is a larger correction, uh, you know, the, the, the platform will liquidate uh, the necessary amount of collateral directly. Right. These are the three options. I, I just have to read this one because it's funny. Someone said, Anthony is such a handsome genius. How does he stay humble while fucking crushing it in all aspects of life? <laughs> <laughs> and there's somebody, there, there's got to be that somebody that. on the team. Uh, you know, nah, <laughs> that's I that's know. what I get. Yeah, the does, check does is in the mail. Does it say who is? <laughs> yeah. Point yeah. 1776. I guess he bought his Bitcoin during the American Revolution. <laughs> that's great well oh, thank you so much i don't think i'm the most humble guy <laughs> am i but i mean thanks for the it's compliment anyway, it's, a, it's but, a nice compliment yeah. i felt uh, compelled to I, read it probably i uh, appear more humble than i am because i'm working all the time and i don't have time to brag about successes yeah. and everything. i think it's just a it's not a bad thing you know, like no but it's like people taking shots at us and, uh, at us and like we don't even respond like who are you these can't. guys? Why? Like, uh, why? Why would I engage with that when, instead of doing something productive? You know. Yeah, I mean that 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 makes complete sense. This is the one that we have up. Uh, this was the next question: Is when will Nexo another security question? When will Nexo incorporate YubiKey onto their platforms? That's his, that's in the pipeline. I don't have a strict deadline for that. Uh, you know, we've had two-factor uh, authentication for a while. The YubiKey, I'm honest. Honestly, I don't know. We'll see yeah. soon. When governance, very uh, simple one. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, when governance is governance, when yeah. governance, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not governments, right? Yeah. Governance, uh, it is coming. Too many it's definitely yeah. uh, this quarter. We want to make sure we run the test right with uh, with the voting, with the different proposals, making sure that we actually can also implement the proposals. We don't want people voting on something that is uh, impossible for us to implement or, uh, you know, well, uh, it, 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 the, the dev team, they say like if something, uh, the, if technology is the problem, technology is not the problem, but like if we have to rework the entire system and, you know, the expectation would be for this to happen in three months and we know it's going to take to take us a year and it's going to distract us. We have to be realistic about what we vote on and we want to check out the different things before we can put it out to vote. But uh, I think this quarter. Yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense. So two questions. When do you plan to engage the affiliate program? And when do you plan to lower the minimum, minimum amount for deposits in euros, which is now 1,000? Well, 1,000 is not a very high number, um, quite frankly, in my opinion. And it's not imposed by the platform as such. It is imposed by our banking partners. Unfortunately, we are still reliant on the legacy type of institutions that uh, banks are. So <laughs> that will be one of the things that when we get a bank license, we can perhaps solve quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't have a deadline. It's dependent on, on the partners. And, you know, overall, we recently raised a little bit uh, 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 some of the, of the um, 
of the minimums uh, yeah. in a, yeah it's, it's because of transaction fees uh, you know uh, with ethereum and the gas prices where they're at i hope that's a temporary solution and <laughs> ethereum figure it out crazy but, yeah it's crazy what was the p first part of the question uh, affiliate program when do you plan affiliate to engage program. The affiliate program? It's this quarter it has been pending for a while it's like you know people sometimes have this antagonistic view as if like we are holding something back or we're not working as hard as we can it's just like so many things and all of them generate new business and i want them all but we gotta prioritize and make sure that you know since we're dealing with people's funds and transactions on the blockchain are immutable irreversible it's not like i, I remember reading an article where uh, a client of deutsche bank they had all of a sudden in their account they like 200 million or something like a, 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 a erroneous uh, a transfer and like Deutsche Bank took it back the next day right as soon as they became aware like with, with blockchain it's, it's impossible so you have to be super careful about the software you put out that's why yeah. some things are taking a little longer yeah it makes sense um what happens to the yield when Bitcoin enters a bear market I guess that being the over Question, people ask this question all the time. Will you always be able to offer 12% or is that going to change depending on the market? You know, will there always be this thirst for leverage on the other side? Honest question, I <laughs> can't tell you for sure. Right. I know that historically uh, Bitcoin futures have been trading predominantly uh, in contango. Yeah, cash and carry. The expectation yeah. was, oh, oh historically 90% of the time that it is going to be higher in the future. And I've seen data going back to 2013. Why and if it will disappear overnight? I don't think it will. Uh, anything's possible. But as I said, our interest rates are uh, not just something we wake up and randomly come up with. These are uh, a product of the market forces. So if this something fundamentally shifts, and for us, there is no way to, you know, generate those yields. We obviously will have to, uh, to, to lower it. But that's why it's no longer just the loan book, but we have this proprietary trading uh, strategies that we have in place. And we have a phenomenal team executing them so that we can, you know, we're keeping our senses open to all the possibilities to generate yield in a safe way so for as long as we possibly can do that we will offer the highest rates but you know that that's the thing about you'll do whatever safe yeah i mean yeah, you'll do whatever yeah, yeah. I don't know why Yogi Berra comes to mind and his quote, the future ain't what it used to be. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. It's just the, the nature of the future is always uncertain. Yeah, I hear everybody talking about that contango trade now, the cash and carry trade. For a long time, it was sort of the GBT premium trade. And now it seems to be the everyone's talking about the cash and carry trade. But yeah. uh, it's basically, yeah, it's basically free money while it lasts, which is pretty incredible. Right, but then Arthur Hayes, he came uh, uh, um, on his blog with uh, with this story that you know in two th there was a cash and uh, uh, cash and carry trade in 2013, and then it was 200 percent per year. <laughs> so you know, obviously there is a downtrend, but if right. like every uh, every 10 years we go down a few percentage points, we'll be fine. So yeah, there's still a long way to go until it's zero. So yeah, fine. Uh, exactly. So there's a, another question. Maybe you kind of touched on this, but during the last AMA, you specifically mentioned you can't disclose what people are going to vote on. Has anything changed in center? Any hints you can give us? You kind of talked about it before, but. Um, nothing has dramatically changed, except that I can say that we will make an announcement soon, like, like soon, like real Perfect. soon. <laughs> <laughs> I know people hate the answer soon, but you know, if I say like a specific deadline, something has to change. I won't. I don't want to be shooting myself in the foot here. Yeah, of course. I mean, there's sometimes uh, I, I know people are always uh, hesitant to say, "Hey, I don't know." There's an answer because no, you want to, but it's a better I answer if you don't want to commit to. Two occasions yeah. to, today, yeah. so yeah, you know, no, it's, 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 it's good. It's good to hear because it's better than saying something and then it not being. I'm scanning through all these questions over here. It's it's uh, crazy how many questions people are asking. 
Uh, will the company sell its own tokens in the future or just utilize its own credit lines to extract value out of Nexo? Wow, that's a complicated question. Yeah, uh, I, I did, Well, yeah. first of all, let me start off that we as a team have not sold our tokens. Like we haven't even touched them. They're in the smart contract for uh, still there. They haven't even been moved from the smart contract so everyone can see them. Right. I think that speaks volume about our conviction three and a half years now, not having touched the tokens and then you know, despite this uh, sensational rise in its value. So we don't have, we don't need to sell them. We do not have the intention of selling them anytime soon. But uh, again, with the future, it's uncertain. Right now, we are in a position to finance ourselves uh, differently in different mechanisms that allow us to grow the enterprise organically. We. It's no secret it's in the token terms. We have company tokens, which are meant for strategic reserves. It's just that uh, with the current dynamics of the market and in the enterprise, we don't need to touch upon those. That per makes perfect sense. Does that sense. answer the question? I think I so. Think it does, yeah. Uh, I think that answers the question. Yeah. This one's been asked a few times, which I, I don't think is in your plans, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it. Scott, please ask. Any plans for Launchpad or a launch pool on Nexo platform? Something like what Binance have, where they uh, they they help startups and I'm not sure. Companies. So that there's that there's that, and then there's I'm assuming because there's so many like uh, Polka starters and all you know the ones that uh, allow companies to do IDOs probably maybe is what they're talking about. I don't know if they're talking about the Binance model or that one. But, right. you know, well, basically for launching new tokens, which I can't imagine. Yeah. The latter one, it's not our core business. So yeah. it's not in the immediate pipeline. Uh, that much is for sure. And then something like Binance, where we help companies launch. We have been talking about allocating uh, some funds to that. Uh, it, it's not a fact yet. So, you know, we are working on it. It's not with the highest priority, I must, yeah, I must sure. admit, but what is with the highest priority well, or higher or high priority uh, is the, uh, the education for financial literacy. It's an initiative that uh, we are working on and, you know, we go, the community is going to see uh, more of that uh, very soon. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, that's great. Yeah, I think that's uh, what we uh, uh, what we can contribute. There's a bunch of people doing, uh, you know, helping startups. But uh, you know, we've just uh, for the time being decided on uh, this direction. Yeah, the, the fi financial education is confounding. It's something that nobody like nobody seems to concentrate on at all. And, you know, taking a loan is a, a serious business, right? You should definitely and understand so exactly what you're taxes. doing. so Why yeah. hasn't that been taught in college or high school yeah. or anywhere for that matter? It, it, it really is crazy. Um, so, uh, hi, Anthony, a suggestion. Can Nexo have a stop loss option to liquidate collateral at a certain price target is reached rather than a certain USD portfolio value? It will help customers save money. That, that is great. That is a really good suggestion. The thing is, it has some challenges uh, with regards to an actual implement, implementation. I myself have been in the hedge fund uh, industry uh, early on in my career. And, you know, a lot of the brokers, they have this guaranteed stop loss, which is uh, possible in... Uh, I don't know, the S&P 500 futures where it's super, super liquid and you can actually guarantee that or even have a reliable, not guaranteed stop loss. With, uh, with crypto, <laughs> the thing is that when things go sour, liquidity dries up like uh, very quickly. It simply evaporates. You know, if you were following last March when we saw Bitcoin drop almost 50%, there was like you know, minutes and zero liquidity. So I am not sure. It, it will be a double sword, uh, double-edged sword here because you have the stop loss mechanism. You take your protected, but then uh, we might not be able to. What happens if it pierces through? Uh, the stop loss, then, 
you know, somebody has to bear the cost and, uh, you know, we are not in opposition to accommodate that and we don't want to pass on that risk to clients. What I will say, though, is that uh, with some of the larger institutional clients, we have been piloting um, products which are complemented by uh, different options and option strategies which come close to this. Now, for the retail, it might take a while and a lot more liquidity for us to effectively be in a position to offer uh, a product that works and makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, that's not a problem that's unique to crypto or your platform either, right? I mean, you couldn't find someone to buy a bond in March of yeah. last year. and <laughs> the, the Fed literally had to come in and print money and backstop the entire market so i mean that, that stop that losses don't work scale. exactly when you need them <laughs> yeah so that that's a problem at scale in the biggest markets literally in the world as well so it's really yes. complicated so um if you take a loan that is taken care of by your earned interest without paying back your principal what happens at maturation what will happen the second year so i guess if your interest is covering your principal what happens well everything with us is dynamic like we Which have so this cool. uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I think so. I like to think so. So there, are no, there is no maturity in the traditional sense. We have to have maturity dates in, in the terms and conditions because of various compliance uh, reasons and the way that uh, the regulator wants it. But the loans get extended like automatically unless you, you say they shouldn't. So there is not like a, 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 a traditional uh, maturity date. So in that sense, it just, you know, rolls on to the next period. And if everything is matched and you don't fall significantly below the loan to value ratio of your particular asset class, is, there is nothing for you uh, to, to do. It's just carry on as it is. So no action yeah. required. Cool. Very cool. Uh, Canada just released some compliance rules for crypto exchanges and platforms. Will Nexo comply? It's news to me. Uh, well, I am unaware of what specifically <laughs> yes, they mean, that. but we have re uh, uh, registered with the Canadian authority. I forgot the name. Was it FinTrack? Is it FinTrack? I think FinTrack. Yeah. FinTrack. Yeah. I think so. Uh, so we are compliant. We have explained our model to the regulator. They have signed off on it. If something came out very very recently i am unaware of that but that's why we have this phenomenal legal team shout out to the legal team they uh, are doing a great job so they're probably working on figuring out what more we need to comply with but uh, we we are a type of company that complies we're not some wild cowboys who just like hope they can yeah. have um VPN and US users yeah, of accessing the platform through a I don't know Hong Kong IP and then they yeah it didn't go too well for so. bit didn't go too well for Bitmix um, uh, yeah, yeah. so uh, I, then I have a, I have a personal question following up that because I asked Sam Bankman Fried the same question he laughed at me so how many lawyers do you have uh, <laughs> uh, a lot a lot and I mean, it's, it's it seems it's insane the bills heavy but it's like I, I don't know Sam in how many jurisdictions he's operating, but we're operating in uh, 200 jurisdictions. Uh. So for every major one, there's a law firm we are working with. <laughs> Our internal team is close to 20 people uh, now. But, you know, in terms of lawyers uh, that we work with, it's... Uh, Hundreds. Uh, I don't, That's insane. I, it could be. I don't know. And I, and I bet that every one of them gives you a different opinion on every single question. <laughs> oh, no, it's very easy. Like you ask them a question and then they tell you, oh, it really depends. So you have to take <laughs> this into the account and then that. And it's, it's probably best you don't do anything. Yeah. Uh, it's that's a, it's a terrific way to run a business. That's, uh, that's yeah. what entrepreneurship ought to be about. Well, lawyers are always hedging, right? They want to give you the yeah. advice that doesn't get them in trouble. So they exactly. could never, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is an interesting question from Gordon. If you went public, would the next hotel can be converted to equity? Is that something you're actually considering? Uh, going public? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I was on Bloomberg the other day uh, and they asked me this, like uh, Matt Miller, he's... Uh, He's had me a couple of times. He was like, now with Coinbase, uh, do you yeah, think everybody should go yeah. public? 
and I am going to give you the same answer I gave him. Ready? I told him, as soon as we are ready to have at least Coinbase's valuation, we're definitely <laughs> going public. <laughs> yeah, so, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but yeah, to, to answer the, the more uh, pressing question, like if we were, were to go public and what happens to the Nexo token, like we are very well aware of our responsibilities to the Nexo token holders. So we're going to make uh, good on the trust they have put on uh, into us. Like we have, we, we have, I know people from the uh, token sale that haven't sold a single token. You know, that's... Uh, it's, it's quite something. I mean, it's, uh, it, it, it is humbling in a way that somebody will have this amount of faith in you uh, to not be selling when they're sitting on close to, I don't know, probably 300x. Right. Uh, and we're not going to disappoint those people. So were we right. ever to go public, we're going to take care of the Nexo token holders. And someone asked if you see the Nexo token as a security. That's a tricky question because these questions tend to be very uh, uh, US centric. Like yeah, everybody course. knows or at least has heard about uh, the Howie Ripple. test and yeah. uh, Ripple by extension yeah. and uh, whatnot. So it really depends. Like uh, I'm a lawyer by education, by the way. So it really oh, depends. Wow. <laughs> Sorry for what I said about lawyers before. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> I kidding. have the practice law. Uh, you stand by your statement, right? Uh, um, Absolutely. No, but, uh, but what I meant is like a, a security means a different thing in different jurisdictions. Like if the SEC uh, would, would look into Nexo tokens, would they find it a security? Probably. Probably yes. But uh, we have gone through the trouble of actually registering, registering our offering uh, with the SEC. We filed the Reg D, so you know we uh, we wanted to be super safe, and we treated the token as if we're doing a uh, a, a, a security sale. We have very few U.S. Um, um, investors uh, during the. We had very few uh, U.S. investors du during the token sale, but still we registered with the SEC. It's just uh, we talk uh, we talked about sleep at night, and that's what gives me a sound sleep at night and you know it is also dynamic by the way you can be a security and then stop being a security and then become a security again this is something that i learned uh probably a year ago yeah. which was surprising i thought it's like forever your security and then in security it's not true it changes all the time so yeah uh depending on what you want to do um you know you gotta you you gotta stay vigilant and uh, react uh, respondingly yeah, Hester Peirce, the SEC commissioner, one of the SEC commissioners, she just reproposed her safe harbor uh, proposition in the United States, which would at least allow people to launch and then take two or three years to like figure it out and prove you're not a security as opposed to basically being deemed a security or guilty from the first second. So I think that would be well, really great if it actually mom, happened. Having crypto a mom. crypto mom on the, the SEC is great. Uh, yeah. But there's a caveat. Uh, the safe harbor won't uh work it's not retroactive yeah, yeah it would have so, to be for people you know, launching right. yeah yeah i guess we'll but still we like clarity i mean all as an entrepreneur and as a business person as an investor even all i ever wanted was clarity you know tell us what you what we can and cannot do and we'll live with it it's just the uncertainty that creates anxiety at the end of the day yeah, getting punished retroactively for something that you thought was fine exactly. when they changed the law is pretty unfair, I would say. Right. Um, so the next one was, where do you see Nexo in five or 10 years? Uh, next to the company or next to the token? Is it capitalized or is it just... It's capitalized the and the EXO, but they might not have known that when they asked. <laughs> okay. All right. Then, uh, then a, well, all capital letters is usually the token. Where do I see double digits? How high? I cannot say. Of course. Um, right. But I think we have substantial potential. It all depends on market condition. Like if Bitcoin were to retrace to 20,000, then obviously it's going to drag everything down. I don't think that's likely, but you know, still a possibility. So if we continue uh, to grow as a space, double digits for sure. Um, and then as a company, I see us uh, grow in 
um, in a couple of directions, like the space will grow, like, you know, we'll go perhaps from 2 trillion to 10 in the next couple of years. But what it means to be crypto and what does it mean to be a blockchain company will also grow in the sense that a lot of companies that think they're going to stay forever outside of blockchain will be, you know, part of the space sooner or later. So will go grow both because the space will grow and also because uh, you know a lot of companies will come uh, and the technology is going to be uh, ever more present. So um, what else? I see us being even more compliant in the sense that we will have a banking license, which I'm very excited about this uh, perhaps was obvious from uh, when we talked about it. So. You know, obviously the team will grow substantially and with that will come new capabilities like we are close to 200 people now, growing on 10% uh, monthly rates um, in terms of people in the company. So I think it's just going to be a growth story throughout. I, I want to talk about that actually. So are you experiencing growing pains? Because we've heard it all across the industry, obviously. And I mean, you know, there's been some complaints about delayed response from Nexo customer support and some people reporting like waiting a few weeks to get, you know, cases resolved. I think we're seeing that yeah. across the entire industry. You said we could ask yeah. the hard questions. So, you know, um, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, we are looking for ways to do things always better. Uh, we are not beyond criticism, especially when we deserve it. I with regards to delays, to a very large extent, they were due to congestions of networks and fees and mining issues, etc. I don't think it's a support uh, uh, type of problem per se. Uh, but like, you know, when people are not getting their money as fast as they, they want, uh, you know, it's on to us to, you know, uh, be the punching bag, which like I I, I don't I, I don't know how people in support uh, deal with it. Like okay, there's positive feedback, but like 90% of when you hear someone giving you feedback is negative. So uh, it, it it's hard on them as well. So especially when they're they're not to blame. You know, can we find a solution? You know, perhaps move from Ethereum to Tron. You know, like. Tether did like Tron, Tether Tron has gotten massive. Uh, yes, we can, but it, it takes a while, you know, all these technological solutions that will better the, 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 uh, the product and the experience because the current infrastructure has changed dramatically and overnight, it takes a while. Uh, I don't think we have a problem with the headcount in, uh, uh, in customer support. All bottlenecks ultimately are with the dev team uh, and it's because we're talking about code of a essentially a financial institution it has to be uh, double triple and quadruple checked so um, it's it's inherent of the type of product that that we are offering the solution is not to hire more people but to optimize the processes that's what we're working on and hopefully we'll uh, be able to congratulate ourselves with results, uh, you know, going forward. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've, I mean, Coinbase is now almost what a hundred billion dollar uh, company by valuation, and they can't. Uh, if Bitcoin moves two hundred dollars, they can't seem to uh, keep their exchange online. And you know, and I was always very critical of that. And I talked to someone in the know, and they said, "Listen, this is like people don't realize technologically how difficult it is to scale." at this speed, yeah. any of these projects, and, you know, we're getting millions yeah. of new people in a month, you know, using it. It's, it's not, you know, it seems so simple from our perspective, like just you have an order book, let us use it. Yeah. But even a company right. that's now public and that big struggles with this every day. Right. And it, it goes against their business interests. They would onboard everyone if, if they could. It's just like there are certain limitations always. And, you know, I understand people being frustrated. I myself have been frustrated as a customer as well, but it's like uh, when you're on the other side, you, <laughs> you, 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 you grow more forgiving, I would say.
Be, be kind to your crypto CEO, right, everyone? <laughs> they're, they're all working uh, 20 hours a day. So um, this is a good question. Interesting. Are your institutional clients subject to the same terms in terms of loan rate, deposit rate, utility, and Nexo token? Of Nexo yes. token, utility of Nexo token. It's a great question, but very simple to answer. Yes. That, 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 Great. That, go, that went quickly. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. It's like, now I need to go through these 70, like, uh, it's mostly like spam comments. And then there's a question every once in a while. So that's what I'm doing okay. over here is trying to get. So do you plan someday to offer the possibility to use Nexo Exchange between Nexo and Euros directly? Between Nexo, the token, I'm presuming. And, yeah, and, and, and Euro? Euros. That's what it's saying. Yeah. Hmm, that's a good question. I, I don't know whether that's planned on the exchange. It would probably take a little while. Well, let me start over. It's going to take uh, longer and in certain jurisdictions quite a bit because they will have to, you know, it, you have the platform and then when you have to comply with local requirements for every different jurisdiction, like the platform has to split and it is complicated to do, especially at scale. So we would have to see where that comes in as a priority and this will ultimately be determined as to what the demand for this particular product is. So I really don't know where that stands, but I don't think that uh, it is super high because like people, they can exchange it for Bitcoin and then use something right. very right. swiftly, turn it into the fiat currency of their choice. Could, could this is from Stelios Ramos? Could Nexo implement RBF replaced by fee on Bitcoin to allow users to raise the fee on a withdrawal in case the initial fee takes too long? RB, what's RBF? Replaced by fee. I guess they're saying, can you like raise the fee um, manually to have a faster right. transaction or something? I, I don't. I didn't know if there was a specific really term. Not my you. area of expertise. Yeah. I'll have to talk to the dev guys again. Being honest here, but. Uh, you know, this again would be, it will take a lot of resources from DEF and perhaps if we do it, it has to be for larger balances. Otherwise, uh, you know, it will be an overkill and I don't know. I really don't know. I have to talk to, to the DEF guys. Got it. Uh, when will the Nexo platform be linked to a bank account? When, well, I don't know. Right. Uh, yeah, no, I'm just trying to figure out what they mean. Like right now you can, you, you can withdraw to your bank account. Right, that's what I thought. So, yeah. you, can, or you, you can replay it like integrations with particular banks. They're further down the road. It's like, uh, you know, we are way too much of a global and borderless enterprise. Like. banking partners so uh, I mean perhaps not as beautifully as a integration with a specific bank but works just as well yeah, that makes perfect sense I lost the sound there for a second you came back in but I'm hoping everybody didn't and it was just uh, on my side which probably it was um, if Nexo, and I know, guys, we're going to be done in a couple of minutes here. We asked a lot of questions. Okay. But if I Nexo, have no idea. What's the time? I don't have a clock. It's three o'clock. Uh, well, oh, okay. Right. So we've been an hour. But if Nexo obtains right. the bank license, then we'll be able to open IBAN account on Nexo to receive directly salary in the Nexo account. I guess someone's saying, will they be able to have direct deposit of their salary if you obtain yep. a banking license? Uh, we are working on a solution that will allow clients to do that even without a banking license. So it's like, this is the whole mentality and philosophy at Nexo. Like we might be 90% done with the bank acquisition and we still will be looking for alternative just in case something goes wrong. So on the essentials, we're always attacking uh, the goal from different directions. So this will this will be possible soon even without a banking license so it's not a prerequisite to have a banking license to allow that we um i'm hopeful that we can um offer it sooner than anyone um 
Oh, thanks. There are a lot of people, by the way, congratulating on your uh, on your uh, child. I guess you just <laughs> had a baby, and, and all I saying had it like two months ago, yeah. And all saying that you look more rested today than before. I do more rested. Today. It's perhaps the makeup. Yeah, I was gonna say. It's, I, it, I, yeah, I'm a, again, I'm a dad. I, again, you never get more showing rested. you my humble side here. Yeah, you I, you never get more rested. I'm sorry. I have a six year old yeah. and a two year old, and it's uh, no, okay. never. Um, yeah. So. Uh, I know that we're pretty much done. So I'm going to just give you a chance. Like, is there anything else that you'd like to add? Anything that we should all be looking for in the coming months or years? Be excited about your chance. Right. I don't, I didn't bring my bag of surprises. I'm gonna. You shouldn't. Uh, you know. Yeah, I'm not didn't gonna take it. the fun out from the PR and comms department. They are in charge of the announcement. So no big announcement today, but just like uh, grateful for uh, the questions. Uh, there were a lot of good questions. Some hard ones, but we don't scare off easily. Uh, you know, for anyone who might be joining us just to, because of the show and, uh, uh, you know, enjoying our talk, do check out the Nexo platform. It's nexo.io. Uh, if you have any follow up questions, my handle is at Anthony Nexo. Uh, you know, do follow me, Scott, as well. Yeah. Uh, and Scott, just thank you so much for uh, making this possible. It has been a lot of fun as well. Thank you. And guys, just so you know, his Twitter handle is in the description right below the video, um, as is all the information on Nexo. So you can click there and get all the information you need. We made sure to add that to the description so that people wouldn't freak out afterwards and go, this is great. Where do I sign up? Yeah. Um, so once again, man, thank you so much for, for the time. I know it's Friday night for you. So uh, go enjoy. And uh, we will definitely my do two this month again. To your, uh, two month old. Yeah. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you, everybody, for 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 checking us out, and definitely do follow Anthony and, and follow up with Nexo. Bye, guys. Peace. That's dope.